Hi, and welcome to The Girlfriend God. My name is Kelly, and I'll be your host. There we go. So... I, I, so I wanted to talk to you today about, oh, well, I guess I should probably start with some sort of introduction, right? Yeah, you probably have it somewhere. <laughs> or I'll send you my little bio blurb and you'll be like, here is Carla. She's amazing. She's incredible. Okay, now move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I was going to say was, you know, today we welcome Dr. Carla Ionescu back to the show. Uh, she was our very first interview in episode two. Yay. Very and excited episode, to be here again. <laughs> and in episode two, we went over um, Carla's very long list of accomplishments. <laughs> and it, it, yeah, so if you want to know all about her, go to the go to the podcast description and all of that will be in there. Unless, Carla, there's something very specific you want to pat yourself on the back for. <laughs> <laughs> Because you should pat yourself on the back once in a while. Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. I think everything has been submitted already and it's up there, but maybe in the future. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I think what you're most known for, for people who follow this podcast is the Goddess Project podcast. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys that are listening in, you can find that pretty much anywhere. Just use the hashtag, the Goddess Project podcast. So. So I initially reached out to you and said, I want to do uh, an episode about witchcraft and goddesses. So I was thinking this morning about, and really this is just kind of a rant about modern day witchcraft. One, I am old enough that when I learned about these things, I had to go, you know, read books. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and consult right. elders in these various traditions. And as I'm sure you know, you know, with the most recent wave of neo paganism and witchcraft, that is very, very far from the truth. And in some ways, I think it's good, right? Because people are interested, but I get very offended when it's simply the witchcraft aesthetic right. rather than right. the actual practice. Right, And I think that people forget that the, the ancient history of witchcraft and even the not so ancient history of witchcraft really is about a spiritual practice. And that seems to have been overridden by this, by this idea that witchcraft is just something to be used to get what you want. And I think mm -hmm. that is not really what witchcraft was about long ago mm -hmm. and the goddesses that were part of that early witchcraft culture were to be revered and honored and that's why when you look up traditional spells it tells you what to give as an offering mm, yes. because you're asking for help with your spell yeah. and i don't hear a lot of people talk about that on the other hand when I go on social media I often don't listen because it's all the stuff I don't like mm -hmm. um but <laughs> you know what I mean like there it's the difference between witchcraft as a practice and witchcraft as a religion mm. so yes it's funny that you say the word aesthetic because I was just on TikTok and everywhere and you know it's October and everyone is doing these TikToks of October <laughs> and they're really witchy and everyone's watching Hocus Pocus too and everyone's mm -hmm. into that which is really lovely like it's very beautiful the aesthetic is beautiful I love it um, but you're right in the sense that there is a there is a possibility that it becomes a trend that is sort of superficial, right? Rather yeah, it's more about something something you do as opposed to something you are. Right, right. And you're right about this idea. I've also seen a lot of people with, oh, um, 
you know, DM me for spells and DM, and, and, and it actually worries me because I think that spell work is not something you should be playing with. Um, Agreed. And, <laughs> right. You should be really careful with spell work. You don't just buy it off the internet. Like you don't just buy a chant and a recipe right. and then go off and do it like that. That could get quite dangerous. So you're right. You're right. A little bit there. I, I feel that way about Neil goddess worship in a way too and the whole love and, and, light and like culture. neo-paganism yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it, it it's great because it allows us exposure but um it does run the the thread or the possibility that um people that are like you should have a leader or a teacher or a guru or you should have someone that's sort of done the work that maybe can instruct you right you know and not just buying it off of, you know, social media. So I agree with you a little bit. I've been feeling that too lately. Um, and now that Hollywood is picking up on it. I mean, I see witch films everywhere, which is right. great. I love witch films, but, um, you know, they're fun. They're not like a practice, you know, you don't copy a practice or right, right. create an identity from the films for yourself. You know, it's right. more like uh, role-playing or whatever, like, like fantasy, right? Um, so yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And I think, but hopefully, hopefully on a positive note, this will lead people to look up witchcraft, maybe a little more in depth, um, right. maybe look at the goddesses, maybe concern themselves with the earth and the seasons. Like maybe there, there, there can be an awakening, right. you know? Right. And I, and I do see that like the people that I know that are other practicing witches like Amelia. Like that is her spiritual life. That is, that is her religion. Um, but that's kind of in stark. Con and I'm sure that there are other people out there in the world. I mean, I don't want to just write off all witches under thirty. Of course, you know? of course, no, no. <laughs> um, but in a way, I feel like you know. I mean, both you and I are all about. Let's read a book about it. Let's do yeah. some research. So it's kind of been a blessing and a curse that since the dawn of Wicca in particular, mm -hmm. and you know, the Gerald Gardner and Scott Cunningham's of the world, yes, you made this information accessible, mm -hmm. but all of those books should have had a disclaimer in the front that said, don't do any of this stuff until you, you have a teacher. And maybe even a coven, you know, like what's happened to the covens? Like, I'm there are saying, still covens, but yeah, right. I thought for a long time I wanted to be in a coven. And the one mm -hmm. experience that I had with that, I was like, there was a lot of hierarchy, which I understand that that's necessary. Mm -hmm. But if your focus is on that, I think this is why I left organized religion. Because right. there were too many fucking rules. That's right. That's right. You know what I mean? So that's right. No, yeah. So I've been yeah, a solitary right. practitioner for yeah. many, many years. And now that I think of it to me, when I think about covens, but mo maybe this is more of a goddess worship sh format or structure. I do. The purpose of joining a group is to have a circular, a circular, uh, what's the word? I don't know. Structure. Right. right. Where, and like a, and like a flow of energy. Yeah. Like you can have seniors, of course, like senior, uh, People who have been in the trade for a long time or in the religion for a long time. Right. Uh, and you can have some leaders, you can have some priestesses, but you're right. Once it becomes too hierarchical, it starts to feel too patriarchal. And then that's a right. turn off for most of us. Yeah, you're right. It's a bit like finding your tribe. I think, you know, that that the way that people talk about, oh, find your tribe. I feel like it's that way too, spirituality or spiritual. Yes. And I get that. And I'm a very community oriented person. Mm -hmm. um but I'm also I was gonna say picky but I'm not picky I'm just discerning mm -hmm. you know what I mean especially now because I am older yeah and I do know more and you know what I mean like I don't know like modern day witchcraft is just all about do what feels right to you which in a certain regard it's that's a good thing right yeah because yeah. you're you're learning to work with your your intuition yeah but if you don't know what you're doing, I, I don't know. It's like a catch-22, right? It's, it's great bit. to have that kind of freedom. But as we alluded to earlier, when you're working with these non, 
physical supernatural beings you should probably know what you're doing a little bit yes yes so, and, 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 sorry to interrupt you but and the idea that okay. all of these beings are benevolent yes right <laughs> yes yes so in terms of goddesses and witchcraft i made a new note for myself about source material because there is a wealth of source material about mm -hmm. goddesses mm -hmm. but we are so accustomed to now if you know for non-researchers if google says it it must be true mm. um so i know that i have read things I, I i wish i could think of an example off the top of my head but i cannot i know that i have read things about goddess lore that i've read it and gone that is completely incorrect mm -hmm. you know and it's not like some obscure corner of the web either it's like you know within the first i don't know 10 google search results right yep mm -hmm. um and the other thing I noticed is, so, okay, so this is a good jumping off point for a pivot. I, cause I've worked with a lot of different goddesses um, right. in my witchcraft. I don't anymore um, right. once in a while, but, um, and whenever I did, there's always, if like, if you type in pretty much any goddess that anyone has ever heard of into Google. Right. You will get various and often conflicting lists of, these are the crystals that go with this goddess. These are yes. the scents that, that this goddess like. These are the colors that this goddess like. Right. These are, um, you know, the, the season, the moon phase, that whatever. Right, right. And I think, if anything needs to be accurate, it should be that. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Like one of the one of the yeah. things that one of the things that Kendall told me, like there were incenses that you were not allowed to burn for particular goddesses, mm -hmm. and other incenses that you could only burn for a particular goddess. Correct. So I mean, I know that. So in goddess worship history the whole these are the things that correspond to this goddess is a that like that's a real thing that we've always done mm -hmm. but I would highly doubt that a lot of what's out there now is accurate yes yes I think and that and as you know this is one of my goals uh in starting the podcast but in also writing the books is that there has to be a rooting in the ancient world. Like there has to be a rooting, there has to be a discussion, there has to be a learning before you can go off and do what you want, which is fine, it's wonderful. You have to have the knowledge of what you're doing and then you can right. select what you, what you wanna do from that. And uh, I had actually a couple of friends that were talking about working with Artemis in the spiritual space. And they said, you know, it was a lot like it was it was aggressive it was uh they felt like sort of like um an anger or a rage or like they were overwhelmed by the power they felt from this particular guy or from working with artemis right. and uh and weren't expecting it and i thought to myself well i mean yes that is to be expected because right. this is a serious divinity and they all are. I mean, I'm not saying any of them are not. I would say actually Artemis is probably one of the easier ones to handle. I mean, you don't want to get involved with Hecate right. or some of the other, you know, maybe dare I say more darker divinities or, you know, that are that are going to come at you powerfully. You want to be able to know what to expect, to, to, to do the proper service for that. And so, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think there is there is um, a gap, a, a space that right. needs to be filled with a certain kind of knowledge. Yes. And a bit of work. Yes. Yeah. I am listening you to you. I just, I did a, I did a Google search of 
um, Artemis and witchcraft just to yeah. just to see. Let's see what this one is. And you and you can tell me if it's accurate or not. While Hecate is the goddess of witchcraft for both Greek and Roman mythology, mm. not entirely accurate. I mean, it right. is, but right. That's about Hecate, and I can speak to that more later. The big umbrella, yeah. Yes. Um, the goddess Diana in Roman mythology, or Artemis as she is known in Greek, is tied to one of the symbols most commonly associated to the craft. While Diana started out as the goddess of the hunt, she later evolved into the goddess of the moon. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, I have, that's the origins of Diana. I don't care about that. All right. Well, that was enough, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and you know, you know, Kelly, now they say that I've been thinking about writing a book on the mistress of animals because I just see her everywhere. And I really think that she's sort of the precursor of lots of these aspects right. of, the of Artemis. And now that you read that a little bit, like it's just, it's just so it's basic. It's, it's superficial. And maybe that's fine if you're just kind of looking just kind of looking browsing but right. um but we need something a bit more in depth so i'm looking at I, I didn't even know this website existed so i'm looking at the wikipedia oh and they say in hellenic lore artemis was the daughter of zeus and leto correct yes. correct or, okay and the twin sister of Apollo. Hmm. She was the Hellenic goddess of forests and hills, virginity, fertility, and the hunt. I was there, the door in the Cypress. And it is said that Artemis. Artemis was one of the most widely venerated of the gods and one of the oldest. Mm -hmm. Her later association with the moon is a popular idea. <laughs> which has little foundation, but may be related to her association with Diana. She became identified uh -huh. with Selene. Uh-huh. Artemis became identified with Selene. Correct? That is correct, but it's complicated. I don't know where to start. The association <laughs> with the moon and with Hecate comes from the Greeks and pre-Greeks. And so the fact that they say that that somehow came with the Romans, which are, of course, later and with the transition to that, perhaps what they mean, it, what they mean is that the Romans, when they took Artemis and made her Diana, they reconnected her in different ways. But Artemis was always associated with the moon and with witchcraft. I mean, her and Hecate are associated for a long time and Celine as well. Yeah, it's a bit. So I, I think there's there's elements of correctness and then there's just a few sort of disconnections that maybe could be made more clear um right that may be a bit misleading you know what i mean right um, so this but, also yeah. says and, I, and i'm wondering if this is accurate artemis the goddess of forests and hills was worshipped throughout ancient greece her best known cults around the island of delos uh sure. in attica or Roran and Buron, yeah. a place I cannot pronounce in Sparta. The ancient yeah. Spartans used to sacrifice to her as one of their patron goddesses before starting a new military campaign. True. That's true. Okay. All right. Well, then I guess uh, Wikipedia is fairly accurate. <laughs> fairly accurate. Fairly accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. Which is good. I mean, we want to. We want to trust the internet to some degree because it is the first point of access for mostly everyone. Right. But what, right. I, what I think people don't understand, like I posted this this video on TikTok about Inanna Ishtar when I saw her at the British Museum. And I've gotten like three or four people that are like, oh no, this is er Ereshkigil. And they're so uh, uh, aggressive about it. No, no, they got it wrong. It's a common mistake. And I looked up, 
uh, so I looked at, I, I actually replied to them. I go, well, please contact the British Museum and the scholars that put this together, you know? <laughs> um, and then they sent me a post of like where they, they, where they got the knowledge that it's Ereshkigal, which is another goddess of Sumer, another goddess of the ancient world. Right. But I don't think that they realize like how scholarship works. Like, I don't right. think that they realize that there is no one truth in a sense. Right. That there is more like an agreement of scholars. Like the majority of scholars agree on this. Therefore, mm -hmm. they claim that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yes, there might be a couple of the scholars that disagree and they might post something online. But there is no such thing as like 100% truth, right? Right, right. And I don't want to go into that debate on TikTok, but I was, I'm fascinated by how people find a minuscule, let's say, person that says something different and they go, no, 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 the whole thing is wrong. Uh, right. I know because I found this website and it says this thing and I'm like, okay, but there's decades of scholars and archaeologists <laughs> that have done work on this. Have you read that, you know? So, right. I don't know how to overcome something like that. It's 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 large. It's uh that's why I said my reply was feel free to contact the British Museum because they, you know, and one of the one of the people said I did contact them and I started laughing because I could only imagine the British Museum being corrected <laughs> by some individual. Uh, oh no, you've got this information. You're entirely <laughs> and everything you've published about it is incorrect because I found this this one site that says, you know, um, or maybe a, a few sites that say, uh, and I didn't want to be mean, but I was like, I, I really don't think you know how scholarship works and certainly how the British Museum works, um, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and Mary Beard, who is like the epitome of feminist scholars in, in Britain and in England and in, in, in the, you know, I mean, she's incorrect. Anyways, it's just, you know, <laughs> It's a lot. Well, and, so I think and that's, and that's right. And that's why I always ask people when they want to tell me about some historical fact. I, and I say, well, how do you know that? Or what did you, because if you can't tell me, a, you know, a legitimate source material that you're citing, then you're really just stating your opinion as fact. Yes. yes. Or yes. what you believe as fact without any evidence to, to, back that up i mean yes there's such a thing as personal gnosis i have a lot of that myself but yes you know some of the other stuff i'm like yes but yeah. you can't pass that off as fact like you know i do like i feel that way too like you have a personal sort of where you know this is a truth for you right but i can't really pass that off as fact because mm -hmm. there's no evidence it's my own personal truth i don't doubt it but I don't want to publicize it as a fact. You know what I'm saying? Like that's right. Right. So I could say it, this is my personal truth, but uh, if I'm writing facts, then I'm going, I'm going to try to go to primary sources. You know? Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that it, when you use the phrase primary source, they don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, that's a very good <laughs> question slash segue. You're right, because yeah. I've used but, it a few but, times but, and people are looking at me weirdly. Right. But instead of going down that rabbit hole. So <laughs> back to, <laughs> so this, okay. So, so back to, you know, they would do this ritual or whatever with mm -hmm. Artemis before war. Yes. Right, or before yes. going to battle. Yes. Is that witchcraft? No. No. Isn't it though? <laughs> the Spartans would the Spartans wouldn't think so. Um, so that's the best I could do as far as uh, close to a fact. The Spartans wouldn't think so. I don't think that our, well, okay, okay, hold on. So if we're asking this Artemis require blood in order to offer you favor, then the the answer may be a slight yes. Yeah. Okay, so if that's what you mean. Yes, I I sometimes think that she does. I mean, she did in the past for sure, no doubt about it. Right. Am I am I going to give her some of my blood today? And I'm not really there yet. <laughs> but in the past, she was definitely a bloodthirsty goddess. But I think for the Spartans, they didn't see it as a witchcraft in that sense. Right. But they saw it as definitely honoring her and gaining her favor. 
Right. And that's what I was thinking about this morning, the kind of combined, because witchcraft is this very broad term that we kind of, that we right. kind of tend to throw around because right. it's such an umbrella term. Yes. But, you know, so depending upon what you define witchcraft is, which you would think it would have occurred to me to look up the definition of witchcraft. <laughs> um, right. But if it's something like, you know, involving this belief in a goddess and doing things to appease her to gain her favor, mm -hmm. I would call that witchcraft. That's a good point. I saw it somewhere. I saw somebody define it saying it's the use of like supernatural forces to create something that wasn't already there or something like that. So right. in a sense, since Artemis is a supernatural force or any sort of energy is a supernatural force, I suppose that if you are offering up your blood in order to activate that supernatural force to do something for you, yeah, I guess that is a kind of witchcraft. Yes. Right. Yes. So the very yeah. first thing that comes up when you search for the definition of witchcraft, which I believe is from the Oxford English Dictionary. Mm. See, this is see, this is a perfect example of the, the kind of shit that I'm talking about. And it's not like the <laughs> Oxford English Dictionary isn't a reputable source, right? Correct. Yes. But the very first definition is the practice of magic especially black magic use of spells why especially black magic right in a modern context religious practice involving magic and affinity with nature usually within a pagan tradition oh that's painful i would i would, I, I would disagree with that a hundred percent i would disagree with that yeah that whole definition pains me right yeah it's very old and, white christian male yeah it's very so, burn the uh, mistake uh old white christian male i'm looking for when that term actually first appeared do you happen to know the answer to that well you scholar if you about, yeah if we're talking about like something like the pharmakai or the pharmakeia which is sort of the use of magic that could be traced back to the greeks and pre-greeks so it's quite old um well and didn't it kind of when we were still like hunter gatherer societies it was the women who knew about herbs and planting and and yes. all of that so i think yeah. I don't know, witchcraft as an idea, did it start with that? That they, that they say, that like, that they sync their menstrual periods and they worked under the moon and they had this kind of what it seemed to be intuitive knowledge about what plants were poisonous, what plants weren't, how long things were going to take to grow. I mean. Yes. Again, if you're using that definition that you are manipulating energy, or something supernatural, right. let's say, blended with natural, organic items to right. create something like healing or poisoning, then yes, I suppose one can argue that even back in tribal culture, shamanic practice was yes. witchcraft. And in fact, shame, shamans often are like that's an inter uh, la, 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 I don't have the vocabulary yeah. this morning but that's one of those words that's like shaman witch is the same thing you know or shaman priestess right. witch seems to be overlapping words right because um, they do the, the same practice you know right yeah so <laughs> we recently watched the Northman oh I've seen friends? it but I've, I've seen the commercials but I haven't watched it so I'm trying to see when, like what that time period was supposed to be. It was like Viking, like yeah, Viking so 1400, age. 1400s, yes. 1600s. Yes. And when they are teaching uh, the, the lead character, when they are teaching him as a young boy, hmm which he gets his training. He goes with his father into a cave. I know you like caves. <laughs> I uh, do. 
to be trained by the shaman. Yes. And somewhere in there, the shaman says to him, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, but says something like, seek the counsel of women, but don't seek that knowledge because that knowledge belongs to them. I see. Essentially. Okay. So um, so I think that, you know, those very, very early witches or women that practiced witchcraft were often, well, tell me if this is true, were often leaders in their communities and uh, and, yes. and tribes and all of those yes. things because they had knowledge that men could not have. Yes, certainly before Christianity, I would say that they were the key connections between this realm and the supernatural realm. I think right. women have always been the gateways or the gatekeepers to right. that knowledge. Uh, yeah, every now and then you get male priests um, who are initiated into that knowledge but women tended to be seen as naturally connected to that knowledge due to the right. fact that, you know, they are the gateways of life. Um, so yes, I think they were often leaders or people or people or teachers or people to be consulted, you know, right. like if, you know, even emperors and like, you know, powerful, let's say people in patriarchy still con consulted so-called witches or shamans or whatever magic right. women right until christianity when they were completely in fact i think that's why the witch burnings happened because they were the women were so powerful and trusted by their community right that the male leaders that came in needed to needed to take that down in order to put themselves on on that pedestal and so therefore the you know the murder of hundreds of thousands of women and some men Right. Took place. Yeah. Um, I read somewhere, see, this is where I yeah, I gotta tell on myself. So I'm like half a half an academic researcher in that I do go look for source material, but then I fail to make a note of what the source material was so I could refer back to it later. Right. <laughs> I will work on that. <laughs> if nothing else, for the purpose of this podcast. Mm -hmm. Um but I read something that when they started making women's dresses, the reason that they chose to make women's dresses without pockets was because they were afraid of women carrying, you know, herbs and other spellcasting materials in their pockets. You know, that would not surprise me. Not yeah. at all. I'll see, I'll see if I can find it and like, you know, yeah. append, you know, make a note about it later. Um, yeah. But yes, I mean, I yeah, I thought that was very interesting. And that goes along with your theme of that you talk about all the time. This, you know, men have always been taught to fear. Yes. Powerful, independent, yes. strong, not virginal women. <laughs> yes. Yes, always, always. And I think they're in awe of them, but also there's a fear there. Right. And I, I know, I mean, I think it's a certain kind of men that really de destroyed that sort of, or want to destroy that power. I think that right. certainly men who are in power feel challenged by that or emasculated by it, or, right. or men who want to come to power are certainly feeling emasculated or feel the, the need to, to control that. But yes, I think that men, you know, men, men often talk about, I want a strong independent woman and then they get one and they're like, Oof, that's a lot of work, you right. know? Right. Um, and that's kind of like how it is with the goddesses. I think people approach the goddesses in awe of their strength and power and rage and et cetera, men and women, and then feel right. like overwhelmed by the power of that, you know, or surprised you know, by the power of that. Right. Um, so, yeah. And I was just thinking about, so in pagan mythology, uh, especially 
you know, now that that's kind of making a resurgence and there's this whole neo-pagan movement, um, Odin, like everybody knows who Odin is, right? but Odin was given the knowledge of witchcraft by a goddess. Like, of course, Freya gave him that knowledge. Yeah, He didn't go out and find it. He wasn't, you know, imbued with it. He wasn't, he had to go and, yes. and, and, and or accept Freya's hell yes. so you know and i but mean then if you, you look know, at the rest of the mythology around then freya is a very sort of minor goddess true very true very true and if you think about even just adam and eve the fact that eve is the one that wants the knowledge right and the fact that this becomes a bad thing is very much a purposeful aggression against the fact that women had knowledge right. and they all always been seeking knowledge and that this now becomes a negative thing. You know, the, right. the whole curiosity killed the cat is literally anti-witchcraft because with that, <laughs> right. right? And because there's a curiosity of knowledge. So that whole statement is a warning to women, you know, don't seek too much knowledge, right? Right, right. Don't, you know, you don't want to know too much. Uh, <laughs> Right. God forbid that you learn too much. And I think the irony is that now women are seeking so much knowledge. And in fact, even at my university, it's like 70% women getting degrees now. Women are in uh, positions of knowledge and teaching and all of these po powerful positions where there's a criticism, in fact, that men are dropping out of school, that men, young men are dropping out of university, that you know the system is not working for them, et cetera, et cetera. I think women have always been seeking knowledge. This is not right. new. It's just new to these generations, right? But always. Uh, right. So, you right. know, I mean, just while we're having this conversation, it occurred to me, you know, because my master's degree is in library and information science, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the stereotypical has always been that librarians are always women. Now, of course, that is no longer true. But I was just thinking, you know what? Maybe that was a good thing. Because right. we are the keepers of knowledge and information, after right. all. Right. So I wonder if that's, you know, by divine design, that that yes. began as a career that attracted women. Because yes. we have that inherent thirst for knowledge, I, I think. Yes. I think. Yeah. Um, so I feel like we're not talking about goddesses enough. So let's let's <laughs> let's do some chit for chat about witchcraft and goddesses. Now I can speak to you from my own experience of how you know of being a practitioner of that, uh, mm -hmm. and I can answer certainly answer any questions that you might have. But mm -hmm. tell me about or tell us about um, what you were thinking about before you knew that we were going to meet this this morning. I wasn't sure what we were going to do uh, as far as witchcraft. I, it's funny that I'm talking so much about it because I wasn't feeling like too knowledgeable about it. It's amazing <laughs> how sometimes I'm like, I don't know anything about that. And then we start talking about like, oh yeah. And then there's this and there's this. And anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm actually just recently uh, feeling very uh, connected to witches and witchcraft. I went to a retreat in May in BC with a bunch of witches, and it was just very, very familiar. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed it. I'm not a witch, or not yet, anyways. Um, I have explored some sort of connections with Crete, which are more priestess connections, like from a spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so I've kind of, I'm kind of diving into that a little bit. What were the priestesses responsibilities in Crete? You know, I'm, I'm into Crete and want to move there. And um, so, but it, like, like we said, like priestesses and witchcraft sort of overlaps as well, although it could be a little bit different, you know, depending so I don't know. So I guess I was I wasn't sure what we were going to talk about. That's what I was like. Right. So what would you like me to talk about today? <laughs> but I'm very open to discussing uh, literally anything. I mean, I teach the witch burnings of Europe. I do teach right. Salem, like in my classes, and so that's something I'm familiar. With. So I thought, okay, if you want to talk about those kinds of things, and then of course Hecate, which is the queen of witches, to put it simply. right. And I was 
I was Which thinking about in any ways like you you know that's your that's your boo. well I don't know that I'd go that far um <laughs> I was thinking about the book that you did for your book club the great cosmic mother that the subtitle is rediscovering the religion of the earth yeah and the book that I am so frustrated about because I cannot find source material that um that scripture from you know the chapel of our mother god its subtitle is scriptures of the world's first faith Ooh. so i you know i don't know that that necessarily has to do with witchcraft although i think in the introduction i'm paraphrasing you know the one of the authors was like pretty much like this is not about witchcraft this is about serious spiritual connection with the goddess I would okay. yeah which I thought was interesting right like, right mm, but maybe it was a a similar like you know I buck against the you know all, all this shit that's on the internet these people were probably like well I mean it wasn't on the internet because it was in the 70s but I'm sure that the people that created that book were like yeah, we want to disassociate ourselves with witches because so here's the problem with witchcraft and goddesses. And of course, I'm making a general assumption, um, but I'm sure the opposite is also true. Most of the people that I have come into contact with who use goddesses as part of their witchcraft are really just using said goddesses as their errand girls. And I don't oh. think that's, and I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. I mm. think that like in my spiritual life and when I practice witchcraft using other goddesses, that number one, I have to remember like, who's the mortal? <laughs> who's the right. mortal human and who's the goddess? Right. And um that I am trying to it with reverence and humility ask her for a partnership yes. rather than you know hey Hecate go do this or hey Isis go do this or hey you know what I mean I can't even imagine that language I can't even imagine people would use well I don't that. think they really say that but that's their yeah. intent right yeah it isn't yeah, about yeah. Yeah. I respect you and the pantheon from which you come from and its rich ancient history. Right. It's more about, so I know what I know that I read about you on the internet and here is what I would like you to do for me. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. I think two things. First, what you were saying about this book, I think that people try to remove themselves and disassociate themselves with craft because it has that negative connotation. Like I even said to a few of my friends when I went away in May, I, was, I said, oh, I'm going to go hang out with witches in the forest. And you could see them, you know, all of us raised Catholic, you know, you could see them kind of take a step back and go, oh, my God, what's happening? Like, what's happening to you? Right? Like, what's going on with you? Like, are you getting lost in, you know, are you being, you know, taken by the cult of witchcraft kind of thing? You could see them almost trying to say that, you know, a bit taken back. So I would like for the word witch and for witchcraft to start be become a more positive, a more uh, like like any other sort of religion, let's say, or spirituality that is something right. that is, and uh, and people you know fall. So that I think that's why a lot of people try to disassociate from that. Right. Um, well, and you know, to some of the writers of witchcraft books to their credit you know they do make a distinct especially raven grimasi who mm. uh who is has passed away uh he's no longer with us but he wrote a ton of books about witchcraft and different traditions of witchcraft like the uh like this traega that comes from this yeah yeah yes yes yeah um but you know he and often in his introductions or forwards or whatever he makes the distinction between witchcraft as a practice and witchcraft as a religion because right. those are two very different things like and i think what makes that distinction 
isn't that, you know, we do different spells or use different ingredients or anything like that. I think the difference is the reverence with which we do it. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. So back so. to God. Oh, so I was thinking, uh, I think your draw to witchcraft is because you know that it's rooted in because you know that it's rooted in ancient history yeah, because you know that a it has to do with the earth right which was here before we were and yep. b because women have been practicing witchcraft since before witchcraft was even a word yes so yes and I'll tell you a secret between you and me and everyone else that's listening. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I only have like 35 people listening <laughs> to the podcast right now. So I, when I went away to Wales and we did this retreat, I had a really, which was just now a couple of weeks ago, I had a really powerful vision which I don't like, I don't have visions. I don't have any of these things every now and then, like I said, of apparently um, you do. <laughs> I, I maybe I do because now, now. That I'm saying it, uh, of Persephone who came and was saying things to me and called me called me a name okay an ancient name and I kept saying to her no no that's not my name my name is Carla you know and she's like she just kept calling me like she was ignoring me um and then uh, it was part of this ecsta ecstatic dance that we were doing anyways it was a journey the vision is was so powerful that is still with me. And it's part of why I am starting to research priestesses in Crete, because this individual was a priestess in Crete. And now long before this happened, when I first went to Crete and I had this visceral, visceral connection to the island and I came back, um, one of the girls that does um, my acupuncture, she's also a spiritualist. And, she, and I was telling her about it. I go, I've never been to a place where I felt so connected, you know? And she right. goes, maybe you have a past life there. So it started this kind of like, almost like the goddess is like shoving me a bit or shoving mm -hmm. people in my path to look up the stuff. And so I think when I'm with the witches, like I said, it feels familiar. Like mm -hmm. their practices feel familiar. Um, the nature feels familiar. The, the goddess honoring feels familiar the drumming right. feels familiar right so right. Um, i'm going with that right now like right you know because those are really right because those are very like primal instincts Correct. right yes. um yes. that just feel right and you never stop to ask why they feel right yes. yes i mean and of course i i have a couple of theories about that one is if i if i have that innately either it's because i practiced such things in a past life or i have other other witches in my ancestry yes 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 it's that idea you know <laughs> that uh we are in our grandmother's womb Right. for our mother's womb is that it's that sort of idea of the the womb and the ovaries and the and the the memory in the dna so yes i agree with you 100 percent. i think a lot right. of it is because we all of us as women have that in our ancestry you know yes um, i mean how could you not right <laughs> yes exactly 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 uh and perhaps even as men the memory of attending rituals attending festivals where women were leading or women were priestesses or women were oracles because right. i do have a lot of men that do come to the podcast or are interested in the goddess and they come with very genuine like questions about you know what does this mean for me you know right. um, yeah i mean it is certainly open to all men i i think that that the interview you mentioned earlier, I think that C.G. Dolan is a total goddess devotee through and through. Mm -hmm. And his, you know, his maleness has not prevented him from, from being that. Exactly, exactly. And the goddesses certainly do not turn away, um, you know, worshipers on, or genuine people that genuinely right. love and honor them, no matter what gender they are. Right. You know, yeah. 
Even Artemis repeatedly asks men to build her a temple. She comes to them and in fact, now that I think of it, and I don't know, this may be a patriarchal thing because men built things in the Greek world. But now that I think of it, almost every single sacred site for her that's built as a structure is a vision from a dude. So she goes right. to a man and says, build me this thing or right. build me that thing, you know? Right. Not women. So again, I don't know if that, that could be like a Greek, of course, patriarchy thing where men built things rather than women. Right. But um, still, that implies that a man can honor the divine and that the divine does, the goddess does come to him and speaks to him. And, you know, so it's open to all genders. So aside from <clears throat> Hecate, who is probably the goddess that is, uh, or at least the well-known goddess that is associated with witchcraft the most, yes. are there other goddesses that you know of that are associated with witchcraft that's a tough question because my first instinct is to say of course artemis persephone demeter i'm thinking of the olympian uh, olympic goddess at this point right um because they like, are part of festivals like women's festivals that have to do with fertility rights with renewal rights with sacred right. rights blah 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 um, so I would say those goddesses right off the bat, um, there are of course goddesses like in the Egyptian pantheon, of course, Isis and Hathor, uh, of course, Sekhmet. So I don't know now that I think of it, it sounds like all of them, uh, or many of them, Nyx, Neith. So I would say, you know, now that you say that it's an interesting point that many goddesses would be considered associated with a kind of witchcraft right um, and i think that's true as well especially yeah. since so uh something that i have seen uh is really popular in the neo-pagan movement is a revival of worshiping a lot of uh celtic and yes. gaulish and welsh witches right because yeah. for years we only knew about yes. Rhiannon thanks to Stevie Nicks and but there yes. are a host of other uh goddesses from that part of the world and pretty much I mean all, so I read earlier that I'm sorry I'm digressing because I'm trying to talk about too many things at the same time I read right. earlier that you know I, I mentioned Gerald Gardner who as I'm sure you know, is considered like the father of Wicca. He said the witches, God and goddess are the ancient gods of the British Isles. And wow. yeah, a horned God of hunting, death and magic who rules over an afterworld paradise, often referred to as the Summerland and a goddess, mm -hmm. the great mother who is simultaneously the eternal virgin and the primordial enchantress who gives regeneration and rebirth to souls of the dead and love to the living. I mean, that sounds like so many gods and goddesses in one, really. Right. Um, so yeah, I could see that. I could see that. And this is why I think it's complicated to worship each goddess on an individual level, I think you can, but I think that there has to be, and this is why, again, with this TikTok debate that I've had, <laughs> it has to be understood that these are multi-layered divinities. You know, that there is no beginning or end to them. That right. they all, in a way, they all trace back to the very beginning and can be traced back. Right, and I think a lot of witches today, you know, they, either they they don't know or they minimize or overlook the fact that a lot of the goddesses that they work with in their practice of witchcraft, um, those goddesses are kind of just like a mashup and amalgamation of a whole bunch of goddesses that came yes. before them. Like, I don't yes. think in witchcraft community that there's a whole lot of, I, I wish that there were more of an emphasis on that. 
Yes. Like you can be super knowledgeable about a goddess and even do the kind of academic research that we do. But if you're missing the part that, you know, she's not really just her, right? Like yeah. she was this in a different tradition. And before that, she was two of these. And before that, she was yes. three of these. And you know what I mean? Yes, I always, this is the one thing that I have most people trying to correct me on. They will be like, no, this thing or this goddess is only this thing, you know? And right. I'm like, I, I sometimes do not have the patience to be fair, to go into an entire explanation because I feel like either listen to the podcast or like pay for my class kind of, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, right. Because I just feel like it's so, it's so over and over and over and over again. Right. And so I try to make it as public as possible, this idea that you cannot pin a goddess down. You cannot. She refuses right. to be pinned. She, is, she sort of embodies whatever the hell she wants and how she wants, right? right. Like, and she is interconnected to the goddesses around her and before her. So, right. you know, you're worshiping her. Like, for example, I, 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 you know, I, I'm obsessed with Artemis. She is my boo. Um, but... I understand that there are multi layers of goddesses that come with that, or sort of a, a, an umbrella effect behind her, or alongside right. Well, her, or, you know what I mean? Right. Well, I think you've heard me say that you know in my spiritual practice, yes, I, you know I, you know, talk to or worship or whatever these various aspects, but I, you know, I call her the Diamond God right? Because she has all these different facets. Like mm -hmm. you have Artemis and I have Ellen. Right. But Ellen isn't just Ellen. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I right. mean, there are things I will call upon her for if there's something very specific that I want or need help with. Um, but I know that Ellen is just one very small part of a much greater whole. And I yes. think that's where we fall into this, you know, distinction between, you know, using witchcraft as a practicality, like a lot of herbalism, right? right. That's very practical um, and, and using it in a way that is the basis of a spiritual life or a spirit, you know, your own personal spiritual theology. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, and I think that that is the damage that monotheism has done to us. Um, yes. Because in the old days, pre-monotheism, people understood contradictions happen simultaneously, and two things can be wrong and right at the same time. Like, they had right. a much broader understanding of the complexities of a divinity. A divinity could be good and bad at the same time. Right. Right? Um, and But with monotheism... We have been forced to think of divinities as responsible for a thing. Or maybe it's even the right. way that monotheism approached Greek mythology. And this was my issue with Stephen Fry. I think you saw my reel on, on Instagram. Yeah. Because it's sort of what that, what that, what it's been, what, what's been happening is that each God has been given almost like a responsibility and then they're right. stuck in that. Right. 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 And what we're saying here actually is, and what I think we've been saying for a long time is that's not the case, you know? They're right. Like I consider they're myself, like I consider myself a monotheist only because I believe that there is one source of power that is responsible for all other sources of power. Right. You right. know what I mean? Like that's right. that whole, you know, those creation myths about you know, there was this darkness or this entity that had a consciousness. Right. And became lonely and, and didn't. So, you know, so she started with creating worlds and planets and the universe and the stars, and then was still kind of lonely. So, and it was too dark, right? So she created, oh, I wonder what light is like. So she created yes. that it was almost like as she thought of things those creations instantaneously came into being yeah right including she us. created her own consort right right so like i said i consider myself a monotheist in in that way that there's one true source that is the creator of all and i don't even think that's a goddess i think that's a something that is so far beyond our human understanding agreed it, it can't even be named i mean 
you know, certainly sure. can't be gendered. Yeah. Right. Right. Like intellectually, I know that I've always known that, that yes. this non-physical, supernatural, all powerful, all knowing could not possibly have a gender, but part of our human condition is the way we interpret information yeah. and you know i i personally i need a lot of iconography that's why i'm you know i've got all these altars around my house and i'm making fucking ellen pillows to sleep with at night and you know what i mean because that visual nice. uh is really key for me right but on this but in the same regard there are things like I have to interpret, like I have yet to, and it doesn't mean I won't in the future, but I really have yet to have a clear vision of Ellen as she, as she would look in a, in a human form, right? I don't have a, right. a clear vision of that. And I wish that I did, because when I'm kind of like in communion with her, I would like to be able to visualize that. But I don't know, like I said, maybe that's coming down the road. Um, so I'm going to take a sharp turn in a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that article that I sent you, uh, from like the 1930s about the deer cult. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking about goddesses and goddesses and witchcraft from that perspective, because this whole concept of the mother of the dear mother of the i don't know just this reverence with deer and their association with a goddess that that wasn't necessarily named right she's just the dear mother yes um and and kind of how that ties into one of those other things that people who practice witchcraft they don't realize that it has roots in that's not even ancient culture, right? That's more recent mm -hmm. than that. Um, mm -hmm. But that that's where these things come from. Like I knew right away when I started to learn about Ellen of the Ways that she was associated with deer mm -hmm. and particularly antlers. Um, and the focus on deer was on reindeer because they are the only species of deer where the females have antlers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't want to, you know, work with her in a witchcraft perspective without understanding the where and why of the things that were associated with her. Yes. Yes. It's true. Actually, I think you bring up a really good point because I've always been drawn to the antlered goddess as well. But I think it's also important to understand, because we're missing it, to understand deer culture. I mean, deer culture is a weird thing to say. But, right. And to understand deers, because the people who worship the divinities lived with the animals, lived in the forest. Yes, understood yes. Movements, understood their practice. That This was something that they didn't even think about. Where for us, I think, we've been so disconnected from nature that... Um, we will worship a divinity and the animal that comes mm -hmm. along with mm -hmm. us. There are the animals that come along with her, but we don't really know much about the animals other than what, what we kind of see on Google. And so, so I do think that it's important to do some research on it's, it's why it's, it's what drives me nuts about men who use uh, alpha alpha culture and they're mm -hmm. like, Oh, I'm an alpha. And I'm like, you don't know anything about wolves. Like, <laughs> you know nothing about a wolf. It drives me nuts. You know, it's like, or women were like, oh, I'm an alpha female. And I'm like, you don't know anything about that, actually. You don't know anything about wolves. Please, don't study wolves before you name yourself an alpha, beta, omega, whatever right. it is. You name yourself. Right. Um, and so I think that that's, I've restrained from saying stuff like that to people. But in my mind, those are the first things that, or, you know, they call themselves whatever. And I'm like, we don't know anything about that animal. And See, you're you are so much nicer than I am because when I hear <laughs> things like that, I, I, I often say to people, I don't think that word means what you think it means. 
<laughs> because yes. we're, you know i mean the history of language and etymology like that's a whole other ball game right but i think yes. at one time we had a better understanding of the words that we use whereas now we just kind of say them by default yeah right yes. that's why synonyms exist right because whatever that thing is whatever the word that was used to describe that thing and the house in which you were raised that's the yeah. word that you're going to use yeah that's true it's so, true it's true that was a, that was well, a weird I, I tilt think, but <laughs> yeah no but i think it's i think i think we've touched on a lot of important aspects of the way that i hope the future of goddess worship and witchcraft moves forward like right and I, and I think the goal the goal that I have in mind for the podcast and for my work is to do that like to be part of that I don't know learning or exploration uh, so that right. people do need a reference or if they do need somebody to say hey I'm interested this goddess feels like she calls to me you know I'm gonna look up some of her whatever especially for Artemis we don't get only a uh, hunt and forests and rivers like Dude, you don't want to access Artemis just with forests and rivers and then get whammed by the powerhouse that she is, a bloodthirsty right. goddess, you know? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Sometimes people say to me, how can Artemis hunt and be the, the protector of deer or animals? And I'm like, well, because those two things are not exclusive. Right. I know right. we live in a vegan world, you know, and, and I get it, but those two things are not exclusive to the ancients or the goddess, right? Right. You can right. hunt and still protect the earth. Right. Right. I mean, we just have to look at indigenous culture for something like that, for example. Right. Um, right. And I think that indigenous cultures have a, a much greater, there, there seems to be this thread of witchcraft going back to very ancient British shamanism. Mm. Like that's where a lot of our witchcraft practice came from. And yeah, I don't know where I was going to go with that. So it's possible. Um, and like but, the, but that the is Druids interesting. And, stuff, right? and the Druids, right. Yeah. Right. That has right. had a Druidry has had a real resurgence in the neo pagan movement. Yes. I've seen it. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. which is good, but also, again, you got to educate yourself. Right. Yeah. So, based on what you know as a researcher, is what you see out there in the world, does that point to a resurgence of goddess worship and feminine divinity focused and matriarchal community? And like, do you see humanity kind of headed in that direction? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, so I've been with the goddess, I'm sure as you have for, you know, at least 20 years. Um, and I've never seen this level of young interest yes. and young question and young openness, actually. It's not just interest, it's openness. Like when I talk, when I used to talk about the goddess 10 years ago in classes, people were not as open to or curious about, or they kind of went, oh yeah, that's like fairy tales of the old days. There was a different, there was a bit of a resistance maybe even or whatever, but now there is such an openness and almost like they took the ball and ran with it, you know, um, to the point that like, would I had done this podcast, you know, five years ago? I don't know. I don't know. It right. felt like the ball was now because, and in many ways it was inspired about my students because we would have conversations now in the last couple of years that felt unfinished. And so I was like, oh, I really want to talk about that. Right. You know, um, and it's interesting that you refer to it as the call because I feel very similarly about why I created the the girlfriend God, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't to preach or to just to be ego driven and talk about my own experience. It was meant to, like, you want me to tell people about you? Okay, you know what I mean. It was it was like that, and yeah. you know, in 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 my spiritual practice, I mean, I'm a very I consider myself a very creative person, but everything that I create is like an offering to her. Yes. Because yes. without her, I because I would not have creativity without yes. her. I would not have yes. any of my, uh, you know, 
personality traits or gifts or talents or even my shortcomings without her. Yes. So I don't know. I keep coming back to that, you know, in, in witchcraft of today, I think what is severely lacking is a reverence. Yes. Reverence. Yes. Reverence to the goddesses that you work with or that you call upon in your witchcraft rather than just calling upon them because you know you think that they're going to help and do and do your bidding and perhaps this is a perhaps this is because we come out of trauma of patriarchy perhaps because one of the things that i see too is there's a lot of love and light uh, emphasis right um, and always like stay away from negativity stay away from this and and i feel like that is a reaction to the trauma that is you are seeking a haven with the goddesses perhaps because right. they assume a type of mothering, uh, perhaps because they assume a type of feminine kindness, which it is there to some degree. Um, so maybe it's just a first step in the sense right. of like, it's the first step away from patriarchy. And so you're walking literally into love and light. You're walking towards love and light. Right. Um, and then you may be surprised. And perhaps actually I've seen people talk about this, that when, as you step into love and light, you start to feel the anger, the rage, the resentment of having lived the trauma, right? So that's part of trauma process. Right. So so perhaps that will be sort of the next phase. And then the goddesses, anger and rage will empower you or, or hold you or hold you while you go through that. Uh, right. Rage. You know. I mean, that is certainly what brought me to, you know, having this, you know, these very intimate relationships with, the goddess is because that came from a place of need when I was hurting and swore I never hurt so bad in my whole life and you know what I mean and and then once I made that connection I was like oh this can really help me <laughs> this can really help me so I mean one place in which like you were just talking about you know you, like you can't have one without the other and the yin and yang and all of that that is somewhere where I think modern day witchcraft got it right right? Mm. Because there's a lot of emphasis on that. Yes. A lot yes. of emphasis on that. But I think where it falters a little bit is people assume that in the interest of that balance, you have to have a female and male divinity. Right. That, I mean, that's what Wicca was about, right? It was never about just the goddess until Dianic Wicca. But from what I understand about Dianic Wiccans, they're fairly militant about mm. their feminism and that's not really my bag and I, you know I'm making a generalization that might I don't know any but Dianic witches so I can't really speak mm -hmm. to that but um there is an emphasis in witchcraft of today and where it gets skewed is like I had someone ask me about my practice where is your you know you're telling me about these things that you use in your witchcraft, what do you, where is your male energy? And I'm like, she is also bringing that male energy. I don't need an additional dude deity to, to be thrown into the mix. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I guess that, you know, focus on, you got to have both is, is both a good thing and a bad thing, right? It is, it is. I was part of a, I participated in a meditation uh, uh, for, uh, I can't remember the name of the school or the place that was holding it, but it was a meditation about women's wombs and uh, the new moon or the full moon, et cetera. Anyways, and one of the things that the leader, the, the woman who was running the meditation had brought in is again, this masculine, like we have to welcome the the mother of whatever and then the king of whatever. And I did felt, I did feel resistance to that. I felt a little bit like, and perhaps that's coming out of my own sort of past where I want to be in a space that is female only, but that, but I believe that in that space, you can have a feminine and masculine because we have it inside us. Right. Like, I feel right. like, I mean, that's in our DNA. Life, right. Right. Like, I think it takes me a lot of masculinity to get through my everyday life, to teach, to work, to pay the bills, to, right. you know, run a family, run a business, run it's whatever. The, and There's it's a lot of that, that logical side that you have to have. Right. Right. Because logic right? is often associated with 
right. masculinity is where we are supposed to be more emotional. That's right. That's right. That's sort of, but I think, I think right. that's, but I think that's true to some, I think that's true to some degree. Yeah. Um, there was something else I was going to ask you about, but then I, you know, did that thing that I do where I interrupt myself. No, no, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I often interrupt myself but because the thoughts in my head move faster than my, than my mouth. I'm, I'm sure that you could, I, well, totally no, I'm not sure. I have a feeling you can relate to that. Yeah. Totally get that. Totally. Cause I listen to you talk and I think, oh, she has that problem too. <laughs> yes. Especially when I pause. I'm so glad that people have come back and, and commented and said, you know, I really like it that it's unedited because I always feel like a bit self-conscious about the fact that I pause. It takes me a minute to reorganize my thoughts or to pause my thoughts. Um, and so, but so far people have enjoyed it. So I was like, okay, okay, this is okay. Um, it is okay. I had, I and <laughs> when I did the interview with Kendall and when she listened to it before I posted it yesterday morning, she said, oh my God, I say, um, so much. And I said, yeah, but you know, I right. think that for both for my podcast and for yours, part of the genuineness of that is that they aren't yes. polished or heavily edited or. Yeah. I want it to sound like a conversation. I really do. Yes. I don't Same. want to come on as like, I am lecturing you now because I lecture all the time, you know? Right. And I'm not an you know, and I'm yeah. not an expert in anything except my own spiritual experience. Yeah. And I because it's I my like, spiritual experience. That's right. And that's right? what people want to connect to, right? Like that's right. Right. That's the connection. Um, and I so do that do with you, my students too. I was gonna say, you know, and, and you've heard me say this before, that I think that, you know, like this is the last iteration of this us, right? She's gonna wipe the board, wipe us off the board, start over again. And I think that there are a few things that she's like, next time, okay, social construct of gender, let's maybe let's not let them do that this time. I, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like the worst, like the worst religious teaching we have been given or spiritual teaching is that you have free will. Sometimes I think mm -hmm. that's, an, that's a mistake, right? Because we've been given too much free will and too much control over our own circumstances. There are days when I would much rather be a puppet on the strings of my goddess than have to work shit out myself. You know mm. what I mean? I would rather just love her and do what I'm told, but it mm. doesn't work that way, right? Yeah. Because yeah. That's, not, that's not how we were created. We were created to think for ourselves and yeah. come to our own conclusions and... Sometimes I think, you know, because I have, I have developed, and I haven't had this that long, but I have developed that, you know, there's this very clear voice in my head, which is not always the same voice, but I always know it's her voice and right. not my own, right. Right? right? And so I will often, you know, I will ask for things like that. I will be like, can you please just be in charge? And I can hear that voice say, no, because the reason you're here is to seek me. And if I were in charge of that, you know, I, you wouldn't have that, you wouldn't have that experience. I mean, I, I think yes. we are meant to be seekers and as seekers to understand that you can't get it wrong and you'll never be done. Right. 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 And that's probably the, the last thing that most people want, right? <laughs> More unfinished work, right? Right. But yeah. We, right. Because we are so indoctrinated into there's a finished product, there's a finish line, mm. there's a deadline, there's a there's a completion to be had. And yes. every spirituality teaches us that no, that is not, that is just not where it's at. Like yeah. to be on your spiritual journey, you, ha you have to connect and allow yourself to be led in a general sense, but then beyond that, come to your own understanding. I know that my understanding of the goddess that I talk to, worship, pray to, commune with, scream, sing love songs to, that is my goddess. 
It isn't anyone mm-hmm. else's. It's not yours or hers or my wife's or anybody else. It may mm-hmm. share certain characteristics, but it is very personal to me. And it was personal to me when I, as a witch as well. I, you know what I mean? It was very personal rather than, again, just this, you know, the technical details of what are the ingredients I need to make this spell work. I mean, yes, that was part of it, but part of it was also, okay, so if this goddess were a human, what would her personality be? And then work with that. You know what I mean? Right. If it's a deity that I worship and I'm calling upon for help, I want to know what they're really like rather than just what they are a good tool for. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel that too. Like, I feel like Artemis has been in my life and pulling me for a long time and patient, to be honest, because for a long time I denied the spiritual existence or the spiritual right. connection. And um, now that I've published a book and I, I have so many other books, I feel like that's the, the call is like, do it, do it, do it. Put more stuff out, right. like expose, right. explore, explore. Um, and to, a, to a point where I'm like in a rush to, you know, I'm like, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. Um, and, uh, but I also feel a very personal connection right. to her in the sense that other people will tell me their connection to her. And it, it's not, it's not like mine, which, which is fine, which is the way it's meant to be, but right. it's like, it's not like mine, you know, right. for sure. And, uh, and perhaps that's what makes that spirituality so unique, because I think in monotheism, the relationship is similar across the board in a sense, right? Like the expectation, even the personality of the God is written down. So, right. So you, so you all kind of, I mean, everything's written down too. I mean, Artemis, I guess, is written down. But I feel like as as a Catholic Christian, we we felt like we all experienced the same God. Right. right. Our identification is the same. Our iconography was the same. Our... Yeah, you have an individual relationship, but it's to the same or similar God. Right. With the goddess, you have more. You have an individual relationship, but almost to a unique version of your God this right and you i don't know right. i don't know if that's accurate but that's just the thought you know i'm yeah. not sure yeah well and not that long ago and i don't remember if it was on tiktok or, or instagram but i you know i made a post and i said you know you've heard of a personal jesus maybe you need a girlfriend god instead right like i i wish that like that's something that i think is very beautiful in traditional christianity right is that they do have this very personal and deeply intimate relationship with jesus they don't have it with god but they do have yeah. it with jesus and i wish True. and mary and mary right i True. wish that people would i don't know d- develop that's what i feel that i have done in my relationship with the goddess And I, Mm -hmm. I wish for others to do that, not because it's what I did, but because it it, it is, I I mean, it's like one of the most miraculous things I've ever had in my life. I'll tell you, Carla, I, you know, I, I worry about very little these days and that was not always the case because I'm a worrier. Like that's an inherent trait that I have, that I have from my uh, very close ancestors, (laughs) you know? Um, right you know right. who are either still alive or haven't been gone very long um and i i don't know it just it brings me such comfort and i can't like i'm not all about toxic positivity right you kind of alluded right. to that earlier right. but i am about you know what you have this whole magical witchy if you will mystical spiritual experience that you're missing out on because you're over here obsessing about the material world like there's no acknowledgement that i have a spiritual life in addition to my material life right or Mm -hmm. that that those two things are mutually exclusive but they're not i mean I can view my finances through a spiritual lens. I can view anything 
through a spiritual lens. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know, like I said, I, I want that for people just because it brings me such comfort. Yes. When I talk about how I can, you know, I'm, I've reached this place where I can literally feel her shoulder, her hand on my shoulder. I, it's, the, uh, you know what I mean? Like, of course I would want that for everybody. It's amazing. Yeah. And it makes me unafraid and it makes me I, secure in my own skin. You know what I mean? It's given me a yeah. tremendous amount of self-confidence, not from a place of ego, but from a place of knowing that I am loved and lovable. And yes. I am always and have always been, am now, always will be, because I know that she loves me and there is no greater love than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not there yet. I know. That's all right. But, all right. Uh, but I, I admire that and I, I, could, I could see that possibility for sure. Well, and obviously I have a lot more free time on my hands than most people do. But, uh, but I, you know, I mean, I did work, right? I yeah, did yeah. work. So, and I made time for it then. Hard. I just have a lot more time for it now yeah. because it does take some effort to get to that place and to open your mind, you know, that this other unearthly realm does exist. Yeah. Yeah. It's the daily rituals too, right? And the daily moments. Yes. And one of the reasons why I don't practice witchcraft a lot anymore is because I, I really started to understand that although I think the gods and goddesses that we work with in witchcraft are appreciative of our efforts, most of the pageantry of witchcraft really is for us. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, if I believe that my life is magical in every waking moment, I don't need to do a ritual with a lot of tools or spell ingredients to prove the validity of that. You know what I mean? If anything, I think doing, I think spell casting is something that boosts that energy, right? Of what you seek or what you desire or conversely what you don't want or don't desire mm -hmm. um but i don't but i no longer believe that it's entirely necessary mm -hmm. because i believe my goddess knows what is in my heart and my soul and knows more about me than i ever will mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i trust her to lead me down paths i trust wholeheartedly that she has my best interest at heart Mm -hmm. and that she obviously knows more than I do and that if I just stop resisting it's mm -hmm. life is so much easier for me when I'm in the flow and I'm only yeah. in the flow I talk about the flow all the time but I'm only in the flow when I am consciously connected to her right like it started with only being able to do that to like reach that level of connection when I'm in the shower, right? Because I always have deep, profound spiritual experiences in the shower. I don't know why, that's just how it is. Okay. So from there, I had to learn how to bring that, the feeling of that connection and how it empowered me. I learned to take that, you know, out of the shower and into my house. And then I right. learned how to take it out of my house and into the world. And then mm -hmm. I learned how to take it, you know, not just when I'm alone with her, but when I'm with other people, you know what I mean? To have that, to feel that presence right here and feel that, you know, silver thread or whatever magical thing that might be. And to trust that it's with me all the time. Now, obviously I'm not perfect at that, but that has taken a lot of effort and a lot of time to be able to get to that place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i mean there's got to be a way right i mean people can't just not have this experience until they're retired or disabled i don't know because it depends on priorities right and mm -hmm. quality of life and people it does it does depend on 
priorities, but I think it also depends on openness because mm -hmm. it has been so trained into us to not believe in such things. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes. Um, and thinking yep. of, and the, and the other disservice of, you know, Catholicism and that kind of, you know, the people, people behaving accordingly to their own moral code, not because they want to be a good person, but because they fear punishment. Yes. That mentality is only going to get you so far and it's never going to feel rewarding or loving. Right. Yes. I mean, the goddess is all about love. Yes. And That's love true. is what is at the root of most spirituality, as is community. I heard a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a lecture on YouTube, and he said, any spiritual path that does not include being of service to others is ultimately doomed to fail. Or at least have limitations. Right. Yes. And that belief of we are all one. That is a belief that I think is probably an ancient belief, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. We are all Agreed. one. We are connected to everything in nature. Mm -hmm. And what we do, we do not only for the good of ourselves, but for the good of our world, for the good of our tribe, for the good of our culture, right? And we've yeah. lost that, I think. But do, so would you say, I mean, that kind of mentality is certainly, would you say that that is obviously present in ancient goddess worship? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there is no, no, actually there's no disconnection between right. the natural world, the divine world, the ritual practice of the humans. In the ancient world, there is no disconnection. There's none. It is a complete sort of bubble, cosmic uh circle yeah right it's like yeah. its own spiritual ecosystem <laughs> yeah right? exactly exactly yeah. the word yeah 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 because everything bleeds the festivals come for a certain time of the year for a certain celebration that is connected to nature or fertility or whatever right. and the god gods play a role the humans play a role the animals being sacrificed play a role everything plays a role the food the kind of food plays a role like so it's so it's so intertwined that it's un you can't really take it apart right yeah right. and so it feels good it feels right it feels natural right right and it's intuitive i mean so much of it was intuitive yeah. but yeah. you know before we had things like research and books and libraries and yeah you know what i mean talk about yeah. well, do what do what feels right to you that used to be all we did, right? It was yeah. instinct above reasoning or logic or, I, you know yeah. what I mean? It just, yeah. and I do believe that, um, you know, I, I think I, I may have mentioned this before, reading this book on pagan ethics and in the introduction, you know, it essentially says that from the moment that man separated himself from nature we've kind of been on this collision course where we're at now ever since yes because yes. we have forgotten I agree. I, yeah yes That's a because i think that everything course. that we're talking about that that knowledge is inherent in us yes right so i really do think that 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 spiritual development of the kind that we're talking about you, you just you have to be open to it and we're just so closed off from that especially here in the united states mm -hmm. i mean it's mm -hmm. such a young country right everything came from somewhere else and yeah. today like people want to talk about cultural appropriation appropriation and i realize that that is a something that needs to be discussed when it comes to things like goddess worship you know what i mean like we have culturally appropriated everything from someone that came yeah. before us right yeah mm -hmm. it's true um, yeah. You know, like there's a just an example from witchcraft is, you know, there's often a debate about what kind of sage we should and shouldn't use mm. because it's cultural appropriation, especially of Native American cultures. So, wow. Yeah. So there is some reverence to that, but sage is really the only thing I can think of off the top of my head where we're like, yeah, you right. know, we really shouldn't do that because it's sacred to 
whatever. That's why I think Caribbean traditions and East African traditions and like the whole hoodoo, voodoo, that I'm glad that all of those are closed traditions, right? I think that's the mistake of having open traditions when it comes to any mm. kind of, of witchcraft or of altering energy um, in the interest of, of achieving something. That's where I think the information, I think the information is probably much purer in closed traditions like that because it has been handed down from generation from generation right. to generation right. to generation and it isn't written down anywhere right right that's yeah. um yeah i could go on and on and on but i know it's getting late <laughs> it's getting late yeah. so so it's kind of about witchcraft and goddesses it is it is i mean we could we could you know we could do this again right um, right every now and then and talk about different sort of almost trends that are going on um well i'm i'm so i'm hoping that as i continue to have more guests on the show that at some point down the road i can have episodes that are more like a panel discussion yeah about things fun. like witchcraft and goddesses yeah that'd be uh, and bring in that mix of academic research and emotional spiritual experience mm -hmm. you know and that what i envision what i envision is everyone on a headset around some virtual table and we're going to tell you the things that we've experienced and you're going to tell us why that is whatever it is is totally inaccurate <laughs> <laughs> in a nice way in a nice way of right course. right 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 yeah that sounds good i like that idea hey thanks for listening new episodes drop every saturday so keep tuning in you can also find the girlfriend god on social media both on tiktok and instagram hashtag the girlfriend god hashtag the girlfriend god podcast again thanks for listening liking sharing and following. The girl.